Some of the largest easily seen wasps are the spider wasps. They run wildly on the forest floor or fly frenetically through the vegetation. Their size, shiny blue-black military look, and large jaws all sum up to a scary impression. All of the some 250 species prey on spiders. But just because there are specialists on spiders doesn't make them experts on the first attack. However, they are pretty good predators. They lay a single egg on or in the body of the spider. Spider wasps carry their victim off to a secluded place, like a tunnel, before laying their egg. A good way to ID spider wasps is to check out their long legs, often the antennae are like this, the hyperactivity and the diagonal suture on the thorax here. Known as the mammoth wasp for their great size, most of them are hairy and hefty with yellow or orange markings on the abdomen. We all have a friend with excessive chest hair, right? The females have spiny legs adapted for digging beetle larvae. Upon finding one, she stings it and lays an egg on the larva. The some 15 species are found up to about 6,500 feet in elevation and are so large one can see them flying through the forest. One easy way to ID them is the strange wave-like markings on the wing here. Tephitted wasps are solitary parasites of large soil-living insects, such as beetle larvae. The wasp burrows into the soil, stings the larva into a temporary paralysis, and then attaches her egg to the beetle's larvae's abdomen. Tephitted wasps have a boot shine look to them but their key ID character is how this plate is shaped on their underside. Where did everyone go? The most frequent encounters with wasps are with the vespids, or paper wasps, which have ruined many a picnic in their search for free food. These wasps have some of the most fascinating behavior and ecology found in the insect world. The some 170 species are mostly combinations of yellow and black. While one group is solitary, most species are social. Look carefully at the head to see an indentation of the eye near where the antennae insert. Also, the three cells in this area help distinguish them. The paper wasps make nests of mud or plant fiber but sometimes they take over other nests. Within the nest is one egg-laying female, which is dominant, so she gets the crown. All other females forage for food, care for the kitties, and build the nest. These plebes are the workers, and of course there are some males. The queen in most cases looks like the other females, except that she is often larger. One way a new nest is made is when a queen or queens take off on their own and form a new colony. In other cases, a queen and a swarm of workers fly off into the sunset. Despite a really bravo sting, they do get attacked by ants that can raid their nests and eat up the more tender stages like eggs and pupa. One species migrates from the lowland dry Pacific into the highlands to wait for the wet season to return. They often prefer human habitations for their vacation condos. This can get a little unnerving for the human owners of the house. This is the new interactive window. Fortunately, during this time of year, they are in a good mood and aren't aggressive. The latest tip from the magazine Better Homes in Jungle is to use the vacuum. 
to get them out of your house. The variety of nest size and type is great. Some species can make paper nests that reach nearly a yard and contain thousands of individuals. Others are home to just a few dozen wasps. This guy's keeping the nest and kitties cool the old fashioned way. Most species are predators of other insects, but those strong mandibles help them acquire other forms of protein. This is an example of one of the caterpillar hunters, or potter wasps. This subfamily of solitary vespids often make nests of mud and provide their young with fresh caterpillars. The other subfamily is very diverse. An easy way to identify paper wasp is that the wings look pleated. The digger wasps are often large, but aren't very hairy. These mostly solitary wasps can be seen digging holes along the beach, but with over 290 species, they can be found in almost any habitat. Female digger wasps catch live prey and after stinging and paralyze it, feed them to their larvae. Some are specialists on flies, others on cockroaches, and they make nests either above the ground or underground. Digger wasps have a distinctive collar between the head and the thorax, and their wings have many veins and cells. Sphecids have a cool cleaning comb on the hind foot. So much of our food these days contains pesticide residue, and one good alternative to eliminating agricultural pests is biological control with wasps. Although not widely used yet in Costa Rica, there are some hog farms that use wasps to kill off fly pests. Of course, wasps are vital in natural ecosystems for controlling other insect populations. And, despite an occasional sting, one should appreciate their complicated ecology and behavior.